we have now covered most of the basic concepts and basic knowledge in measurement and certain estimation. And we can now make a small overview of the approaches that exist for measurement and certain estimation. And let us start from the basic question that analytical laboratory usually has when uncertainty estimation is considered. So usually lab people more or less know the uncertainty sources of their procedures because they are professionals and they use those procedures in their everyday work. Secondly, they usually have lots of data of different kind. They have control charts and proficiency testing results, parallel measurement data, etc. They also have calibration data of instruments, they have data of the volumetric equipment, etc. And the main question is how to use these data to take these uncertainty sources into account. So how could a person in a laboratory make maximum use of the data that already exists to take all necessary sources of uncertainty into account and carry out the uncertainty evaluation. And there are different approaches that offer different solutions to this problem. And let us look here a scheme which summarizes in very general way the main approaches that exist. So we can see that all starts from definition of the measurement. So the measurement always needs to be defined clearly whichever the approach is that we use. And then the approaches are split into single lab and interlaboratory approaches. And let us first have a look at the single lab approaches. They are in turn separated into model-based and not model-based approaches. And now the model-based approach is the so-called modeling or sometimes also called the ISO-GAM modeling approach which is pretty much the standard approach for measurement uncertainty evaluation, especially in physical sciences. And this approach involves component by component evaluation of uncertainties, meaning the measurement procedure is looked at very carefully, different uncertainty sources and uncertainty components are found and separately quantified. There's an alternative approach which is the so-called single validation approach. This is not the model based in the sense that although you need the model for calculating your analysis result, but you don't really need the model for calculating uncertainty. This uh, uncertainty evaluation approach takes into account more general uncertainty contributions. It is not as detailed, it works with general uncertainty contributions such as within lab reproducibility, laboratory bias, etc. This approach has been formalized in several guides, but perhaps the best known is the so-called Nordest uncertainty guide, which also we will examine more closely in this course. We could say that these two are the main approaches and of course, whenever possible, one would perhaps consider this approach because it gives more information, but it also needs much more competence. And it unfortunately does have the drawback that sometimes underestimated uncertainties are obtained. This one, on the other hand, is very suitable for routine laboratories. It does not need so much extra work and makes very good use of the already existing data and usually does not lead to underestimated uncertainties. In fact, it sometimes leads to overestimated uncertainties. And it does not need as high competence level as this uncertainty estimation approach. But of course, from this approach, you will not learn nearly as much about your procedures from this approach. These are the two ones that would be recommended for using in your everyday work. Now, let us turn to these interlaboratory approaches. The interlaboratory approaches differ from these two in the sense that actually data from your lab 
or situation from your lab is not taken into account at all in any way. And this is why these approaches are not recommended. In fact, the main use of these approaches would be to find out more or less what the uncertainty could be in the situation that you even don't yet have the procedure and you want to know preliminarily what you can expect from this procedure. So in routine everyday work, these approaches are not recommended and we will not touch deeply these approaches also in this course. The approaches that we looked at, they give uncertainties that refer to different situations. So, this modeling approach, in fact, calculates the uncertainty for the individual actual result that you had on one concrete individual day with one concrete sample. The single lab validation approach calculates a typical uncertainty of the results which you can obtain with the particular procedure. So that this uncertainty estimate is not directly linked to any particular sample. It's rather linked to a procedure, while this one can be linked to a real particular sample or a real individual result. And now these interlaboratory approaches, they in fact give some typical general uncertainty which can be expected from this procedure when used in different laboratories.